Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lines TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys another News Daily video. This time, I'm going to focus on two stories for today, and they are going to be on the latest developments surrounding Edward Mendy and Callum Hudson Odoi. So, I hope you guys do enjoy. We're going to delve deep into things, but before I continue on, I want to let you guys know very quickly expect the post match content to be released tomorrow after that 3 1 win last night against Brian. Now, at this point in time, I've seen this game about two and a half times. I still need to catch the second half to make it three times but you know this game really inspired me i saw so many interesting tactical observations and i feel like you guys should enjoy tomorrow's content when i release it so without wasting any more time and you know that's of course after you smash the like button and giving me 4,000 likes for today's video we start with the first big story today and that's the latest development surrounding edward mendy now at this point in time all of us fans know that Mendy has agreed personal terms. We know that Mendy has done his medical as well. He has come to London. He's joined the club. He has come to London. He has had his tour around the club as well. The only hold up in this deal is Ren. Now, we thought that we agreed final terms earlier. That was not the case. And over the past few days, you guys, there have been so many conflicting reports in regards to what these final agreements are. Now, it does seem like Ren don't feel too pleased to be selling their goalkeeper. You know, I'd understand. Mendy is a great player, a great talent, and he was a key player for them last season. Over the past few days, we've seen that Ren wanted Giroud as part of the deal to actually sell Mendy. And since then, there have been so many conflicting reports in regards to final agreements. We've seen figures of 25 million euros. We've seen 80 million euros up front plus another 7 million in bonuses. We've even seen 22 million euros up front plus 6 million in additional clauses. But at this point in time, I guess no one knows what the final concrete answers are. But Recently, over the past hour I'd say, new reports came up from France suggesting that Ren wants Amori as part of a loan offer to actually let Mendy sign for us. Now, this is quite interesting because in that sense, Mendy would cost less money because we'd be offering Tamori as part of the loan. But this fully comes down to Frank Lampard and whether he decides that it would be best for Tamori's development and his career to make the move to France to a team like Ren. I think this is quite interesting. When you compare all our defenders right now, you know, your Thiago Silvers, Christensen, Zoomers, you'd say that those three players in particular are the safest ones. I mean, of course, Thiago Silva, we've just signed him, so duh. And in the case of Zuma too, Zuma has played the most minutes as a centre-back under Frank Lampard. And Christensen as well has lots of, you know, support in the club coaches rate him Lampard rates him too so you get the sense that these two players would be the safest ones so this does leave Rudiger and Zamori now in the case of Rudiger this is quite interesting because I've been hearing some things suggesting that the club could be potentially open and willing to selling Rudiger in this window I think this makes a ton of sense. When you consider that Thiago Silva was signed to be the experienced defender that Lampard wants, you know, that experienced defender to work alongside a younger defender, I guess he effectively replaces Rudiger. I think it's quite simple. It seems like even though Rudiger's injuries, I personally feel definitely affect some of his form. Let's not pretend that Rudiger was this world-class defender in the first place because that was never the case. I think he's a great guy. I think he is a good player. I just don't think that he has that consistent class to constantly be that, you know, first team defender that we need. If we can get the right offers for Rudiger, then a deal could happen. But at this point in time, it entirely depends on the offers received for Rudiger. So, in that sense, if it did become difficult to actually just part with Rudiger and sell him, maybe the smart final alternative would be to actually loan Tamori to Ren to get one defender off the list to make sure that we have four for this window. You know, this could be the wisest thing to do. Now, I can't say I'd be pleased, I'll be happy, but you know, I'm putting my emotions to the sides. I'm seeing things for what they are. Tamori would only go out on loan, meaning that he would come back for us. And you know, at the same time, Ren are a team on the rise. They have Kamavinga, one of the best young players in the world, one of the best ones I've seen for a very long time too. You know, they play football the right way. They have some excellent talents too, a nice tactical setup, and they were a team that were challenging for a UCL sport before Liga was cancelled last season. So it's not like Tamori is going to a poor club where he won't grow, his development will be absolutely ruined, and, and he won't get that experience that he needs. 
Tomori can get that game time, learn a new culture and come back to the club a year later where, you know, realistically we might have sold Rudiger. Maybe Thiago Silva's decided to move on and, you know, go elsewhere. Tomori could come back fully confident with a place ready and available for him. So if, if actually letting him go on loan to Ren was the best thing to do to get this deal wrapped up, maybe that could be the wisest thing to do. But I'm going to pose this question to you guys. How do you feel about this? Would you like to see Tomori going out loan to Ren? Do you even think that we have to entertain this offer in the first place? Because right now, the ball really is in our court right now. So on that point, you guys, we now move on to the second and final story for today. And I want to speak about these Callum hudson Adoy reports. Now, this story came from Sky Germany and you know, straight away, that should make us feel skeptical immediately. Let's not pretend that when it came to the hudson Adoy and Bayern Munich, uh, you know, chance for cycle all those years back, their reports weren't the most accurate at times. So I'm definitely taking things with a slight pinch of salt. But anyway, they're suggesting that Bayern Munich may not have given up on hudson Odoi just yet. Of course, with Coutinho returning back to Barcelona, with them not signing uh, Perisic as well, there is another spot available in the team for another attacking player. We know that Bayern Munich have had a long-term interest in hudson Odoi. They spoke to him his family, his agents, everyone. And it does not surprise me that they might entertain coming back for the player, especially in a time now where hudson Adoy isn't getting guaranteed first-team football. Now, when I was reading this article, you know, I have to say, I felt like uh, there wasn't too much concrete information at this point in time. And I guess this is definitely reflected in the sense that Bayern Munich's loan approach, because that's what they're leading with, is really an informal loan approach made to hudson Adoy and his reps. Now, you know, all I can say at this point in time is that it's been reported by Sky Germany. I don't know if this is actually the facts or if this is actually real. I don't personally believe this. And one of the main reasons for this is that in the very same article, it does say that RB Leipzig and Juventus are two other interested parties looking at hudson Adoy. This makes no sense because number one, Leipzig can't afford hudson Adoy's wages. And number two, I don't think Juventus are looking at any player like him at all so at this point in time i'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions i'm going to keep things hypothetical at a point and the first thing i want to say is that you know it's natural that these reports are going to come out in the first place since hudson adoy has recovered from his achilles injury it's not like he set the world on fire he's picked up so many other minor smaller injuries throughout last season too that he didn't really get consistent quality minutes last season. Now that we've just signed uh, Havertz, Ziyech, Werner, and now that Pulisic is absolutely on fire right now, you know, there is a fair argument that hudson Adoy could be the fourth choice attacking player at this point in time. Does this mean that we should cash in on him and let him go? I personally don't think so. I don't see the benefit of even learning him as a Bayern Munich in the first place because how would that benefit us? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And also in the case of hudson Adoy. Bayern just signed Sane. They have Nabri too. Realistically, hudson Adoy could be going into the very same situation that he is currently in right now. So some of these stories and these links aren't really adding up to me. I'd say that hudson Adoy's future this season looks a lot more promising than last season. This summer we've signed Havertz and Ziyech that play down the right hand side. Down the left, he has competition alongside Pulisic and, you know, it is going to be a case of the best man wins, but realistically, Lampard's going to be so fluid. We're going to see so many different formations and lineups that I personally feel that a lot of these guys are going to get strong and solid minutes for this season. The reality is, when you have a serious ACL injury like this, you know, it does mean that your body becomes more susceptible to picking up smaller, minor aggravations. Throughout last season, hudson Adoy picks up so many small injuries, illnesses, and even COVID as well. So it's only natural that, you know, things really stall for him last season. This season, things are absolutely different. I do feel like he can have a solid season. Let's see how he copes this season. Let's see how he copes against the other attacking options around him too. We cannot forget that Frank Lampard partially spoke to hudson Adoy to make sure that he had the players back in. Hudson clearly trusts Frank Lampard. And on top of all of this, you guys, he is only 19 years old. He's a teenager. He's still very young. He has plenty of time on his side. I guess the only thing that I'm hoping for is hoping that Hudson plays more down the left-hand side this season compared to the right-hand side. Because for me, down the left-hand side, that's where you really see what hudson Adoy is about. 
you see his playmaking abilities, his switch balls, his movement in between the lines, uh, his finishing ability too, you know, those curling shots, like cutting inside, blasting into the back of the net. I've seen Callum play since he was in the academy. I know what he's about. I know his skills. And I still think that we haven't fully seen everything that the player is fully about so let's give him some time you guys let's still support our boy and have faith in him and on that point i'm gonna wrap things up and keep things moving thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe i'm nini fc this is blue lions tv i'll catch you guys later with some more videos